Fantastic to meet you both. Thanks so much for taking the time to speak with us. Sure. Thanks for coming Thank up. You. So for people who don't know anything about the film, what can you tell us about Dragged Across Concrete and in particular your character, Henry? Well, that's two different things. You want to start with Dragged Across Concrete? Yeah, and it's then it I'll just, go into... This, this is... Um, uh, this is a, a, a sprawling crime piece, uh, more in the style of, of things that were made in yesteryear, Killing and Heat, uh, Dog Day Afternoon, Prince of the City, things like that. And it's a story of uh, Henry Johns, Ridgeman, uh, Anthony Lurisetti, three people, different walks of life, who are forced by economic circumstance to do things that they'd rather not do and enter the, uh, the criminal underworld. I couldn't have said it better myself, which is why I didn't say it. Um, <laughs> I play a character, Henry Johns, who uh, is fresh out of the penitentiary, comes home, and he finds his mom addicted to heroin, and she's not taking care of his crippled brother, and he has to do something to, uh, to, to change their situation, and he gets involved uh, with an old friend of his, and, and they, um, they get involved with some wrong people, and they run into these guys, Ridgman and, and, um, and Lurisetti. Um, so, yeah, I just sort of, I sort of mangled that response, but it's sort of all in there. <laughs> it's his point of view it's, of the it's, story. Yeah. It's his character's point of view of the yeah. story. And it's a fantastic cast, and you're back working with Vince Vaughn, mm -hmm. also got Mel Gibson on board, and mm -hmm. of course, of course, as well. So, how did you get these got together, and how is it for you guys working together? Um... In terms of getting them together, I was working on Brawl and, and knew I had a really good thing with Vince in terms of uh, actor-director relationship. Just, it just was really good, and we knew um, then that we, that we wanted to work together. And before that movie wrapped, I offered him the role of Anthony. And then once he came in, that sort of set the bar for, um, you know, kind of an age range and, and type that his uh, more veteran partner would, would need to be. And... We discussed the idea of, of Mel Gibson right away, who, who seemed like a great choice for the role, and went out to him, and he came he came on right away. And then when, you know, like there's, you know, a, a lot a lot of thought in terms of who was going to be Henry Johns, and I knew, uh, you know, I had had a had a few different ideas. And when I started taking a look at uh, Tori Kittle's work and was aware of a few different pieces, but but really started looking at a lot of stuff, I just saw. The consistency and the voice and the presence and the charisma, and I was like, "Oh, this is the guy," and there was no audition or anything. I just brought him in, and he had a, a, a working relationship with Vince Vaughn uh, prior to it, and and Vince had said great things about him as well. So it was just, you know, it, it was helps. just green. Yeah, helps it to was, have it helps <laughs> to have friends. You it know, was just like, green like lights Vaughn. all around. As, <laughs> it was just green lights all around as to why I should work with this guy, and happy that I did, and will again. And how was it for you being involved with this team? It was incredible. Just from the start, it was incredible. Um, you know, I was doing Shakespeare. I was on stage, and I, I couldn't audition. I would have, actually. But, you know, <laughs> I'm glad I didn't have to. But, uh, but uh, so I was on stage, and I get a call from my agent says, you have to read the script. I read the script, and, and one pop, and, and he's like, you're going to talk to this guy tomorrow. This guy, Zoller, one name, Zoller, like <laughs> Spielberg, like Denzel, just Zoller, you know? And um, we get on the phone, we talk for 30 minutes, and, and, um, and he offered me the part. Um, and it was, it, it, you know, strangely enough, it was really an e easy transition going from Shakespeare into Zoller's world. Um, it, it, you know, rhythmically, there are certain things that he, he gives you on the page that you that I inherently knew, and I think that's because we share um, a, a, a birthplace of Florida. You know, we're both Florida boys, and I think um, there's something that I knew inherently with the character of Henry Johns that immediately when I read it. Like, I know this. I, this is inside of me. I don't have to do much. And so the trick for me was getting out of the way of what he'd already done. And, um, and he was great on set. You know, he, was, he created an, an environment for us to rehearse and talk through things before we shot. Um, and then, you know, if he needed something a little different on set, he, you know, he'd tell me, but it wasn't uh, too much. Um, but it was, you know, it was a very, very easy process, actually. We're back. <laughs> 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 Hand slate, right? You seem to have developed a knack for these kind of really inventive but kind of unflinching, quite violent action set pieces. So, you know, how and why do you develop those? And, and what was it like for you kind of making his vision, you know, come to life? 
the the how and why uh, comes from I'm I'm a movie fan and I'm a reader, and uh, if I'm writing something and it seems like something I've uh, read before or seen before, I go in a different direction. Which isn't to say that something I'm unaware of could could slip in there, but in general, my writing process is surprise myself. So um, the moments of violence and the action set pieces and who lives and, and who doesn't, that those are usually surprises to me. Certainly, uh, who lives and dies at the end of this movie and the end of uh, Bone Tomahawk changed multiple times throughout the course of writing. And then by the time I got to the end, uh, I, I figured out and landed on decisions. But it's I think it's surprising to the audience because it's surprising to me. And I'm open to those changes every day that I write. Yeah, as an actor, you're always looking to surprise yourself. And so, you know, I read a lot of scripts and very seldom am I, I, I surprised. Am I, am I surprised? And so reading this, you know, I definitely was. You know, there's a typical way of storytelling where you have one protagonist and you're going to follow that protagonist along a journey and there are going to be certain obstacles and, you know, and then they're going to win. But with this, you know, there's a possibility of maybe three protagonists and you don't know who's going to win. And so as I was reading and I was turning pages and I just kept going, I kept going. And when the outcome did happen, I couldn't believe it. I was, I was, I was shocked. And you've kind of developed a bit of a cult following, I think, with Bone Tomahawk and Born in the South of 99. So how do you think this film kind of maybe shows an evolution from those other movies? And what do you think people are going to take away ultimately from this one? Um... People are going to take away different things. I mean, I, th I think for the most part, if you're on board for what I'm doing and, and the different way in, in which I'm doing it, uh, this, is, this is the third example. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm proudest of this movie. Uh, I also wrote this much more recently. I wrote this at, uh, in the first month of 2016, whereas Bone Tomahawk and Brawl and Cellbox 99 were both written 2010, beginning in 2011. So this was the first movie that I'd written um, after I'd made one, after I made Bone Tomahawk. So I knew a lot of the stuff that I was interested in, which were these um, interesting silences and um, the stylized dialogue and people who have deep histories that a couple of lines shines a light on and throws a shadow over. Uh, so you really get a sense of a history in the world outside the world. So this one was really written for me to direct, uh, as, as was Bone Tomahawk, but that was a lot of years ago. I've probably written seven or eight screenplays and three novels since I'd written Bone Tomahawk. And so this one was, was much more recent and I think, you know, just, just showed some different skill sets. And I was able, because the shoot was much longer, I was able to have an even more controlled hand in terms of how I approached it cinematographically. So there's just more precision with that stuff, and uh, I'm I'm just thrilled with the performances that are in there, which is so much more important than any style choice I'm I'm ever gonna make. If those, if you like the script and the performances land, you're gonna have a good movie. And I just saw that happening day after day with this with this incredible cast. And what do you think people are gonna take away? I think people are going to say, "Oh my God, what the fuck!" I think they're gonna be shocked. Uh, you know, I, I would never tell an audience member what to take away from something, but I think they're going to be shocked. I think they're going to, uh, you know, it's just good cinema. It's just good cinema. Okay, fantastic. Thanks so much for your time. Let me speak yeah. with you. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you.